Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Pocket of Reschool and happy Facebook Live night. So every Wednesday this school year, except around the holidays, I will be coming to you live and sharing some ideas um, that you can use and implement tomorrow um, in your classroom. And I'm trying to do this on Facebook and Instagram at the same time. So we're just going to see how this works. But um, if you want to watch any past Facebook Lives, you can hop over to my blog, Facebook. They're at the top of this post. Um, and I have, this is my fifth year doing Facebook Lives on Wednesday night. So um, there's a ton, like a bazillion to choose from, like over like 150 videos. So a ton. So if you need something, there's probably one there. Um, so hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So tonight... Um, I'm going to share all about my go-to table time activities or arrival activities or departure activities. Basically, what do you do when the kids come in and what do you do when the kids um, are leaving um, for the day? So we always start with a table time activity that is out on the table. And then um, there's always, at the end of the day, I put an activity out on the table so because our parents would come into our room to pick up the kiddos and they would have to sign them out. So there was a table activity because there was about a 15 minute window um, they could pick up their kids. Um, so that way their kiddos were doing something and engaged and learning while all the parents were picking up and I could talk to families um, either in the morning or in the afternoon. So, but these will work even if you're, um, even if you um, pick up your kids all at once and you, um, uh, dismiss all your kids at once. You can totally have these ready on the tables for when you pick them up and they're all doing their morning routine um, at different speeds <laughs> and um, talking to you um, and you're helping kiddos with all those morning routines, especially those first few weeks, getting everything down. Um, these are some activities you can have on the ac activities you can have on the tables ready to go um, and they can do it independently. So, um, so where am I getting some of these ideas from? So if you go onto my blog, I have lesson plans for you guys for the first 10 days of school. Um, and I just say 10 days of school because I know some people are two days a week, some people are three days a week, some people are five days a week. So it's just your first 10 days-ish. And you can um, edit them as you wish. But those are on the blog and it has um, centers and then it has kind of each day broken up and then there's links inside to all the things. So if you want those, this is my lesson plan binder. Um, you can absolutely grab those. They're on my blog um, for free for you to grab. So what do I do during those first couple days, first couple weeks or month for table time? So I always say the activities have to be where anything that kiddos can do completely independently. That way if I have to help a kiddo, um, if I have to comfort them because they're sad, um, I can do that. Or if I have to talk to a family member or if I have to talk to admin or another teacher or um, a therapist or just the back to school is so crazy and the morning is so crazy. Um, I want to make sure all these activities they can do independently with no help um, and it's something that they can be successful with um, so that way they're not frustrating activities but they're basically activities just to kind of get their brains going to get them talking to each other starting to develop all of those um, relationships um, with their friends and their peers. Um, so. I always say it has to be where the kids have to be independent and they have to be easy to clean up. So no paint, no slime. I don't do any sensory, um, like messy sensory. Um, if I do sensory, it's like a, like a hair gel baggy type activity where it's contained <laughs> and it can't go on the floor um, because I want um, students to be able to help clean up this um, table time activity um, independently or at least kind of start to be independent doing that. So I wanna make it something that they can easily clean up that no one has to wash their hands, um, there's nothing sticky or paint or goopy or any of that. Now, I do do all of those messy things later in the year once we get all, the, all those routines down. And on my blog, I do have a giant list of small group and um, table time activities. Um, just go to my blog, pocketofpreschool.com, a search small group or table time, and you will find that free gigantic list. And it's divided up by areas like um, science, literacy, math, all the things. So that is there for you too, and you can plop that in your lesson plan binder. So the first um, thing I do is um, the first day we are doing these little all about me little people. So I have one of these and I cut them out 
because at this point, a three-year-old is not cutting this out, <laughs> um, probably, <laughs> um, for the first few weeks of school. And if they can, um, it would be super frustrating. So I have all these pre-cut. This is in my All About Me pack in my TBT store. And I have these out, and I have these out, and I have one at each, one at each seat. And then I have paint sticks out with them because paint sticks are gorgeous, they're bright and they're vibrant, and they're mess free. You can also put out markers. When I put out markers at the table, I like to have them in buckets or something where they can be on the table. Students can share. If you're sharing supplies this year, if you're not, you can have the um, name tags out and that kiddo has to find their spot with their supplies or if you're using boxes or supply bags, whatever it is. Um, but that way you can easily clean up the, um, the markers, they can share. Um, so the first day, they are all just coloring their All About Me little guy. And then the second day, um, I have them out with their name tags. And their name tags have their photos on them. So they find their photo and then they are gluing the second day with a glue stick. Um, so that's the first two days. And it's completely independent because these can be, they can make them however they want. <laughs> Oh, Katrina said your hair is amazing. So thanks. I just actually got it done today, and she did a really, really good job. So thank you. Um, yeah, I didn't do it. That I, I can't make my hair this pretty by myself. <laughs> so yeah, but thank you guys. That's so sweet. Um, so yeah, so we do these the first couple days because I love having these on the boards. Um, cause uh, as you like, this is how my bulletin boards are in my classroom for back to school. There, a lot of them are empty or blank because I want student workup. So that's a really easy way to get student workup just to do a little two-day two day little table time project. And that's in my All About Me pack. Um, you can also put out just markers with plain pieces of paper at each, at each table just so they can color a picture. Um, and then you can hang those up on the wall too if you don't wanna do a little person. I just like to do something those first couple days so I can get some artwork up on the walls even if it is just markers or whatever it is because um, usually we don't <laughs> learn how to use the glue glue sticks until about, you know, sometime the second day during that first small group. Um, so yeah, so put the markers up and make smart. So you have something on your um, your walls. Um, and somebody said it's better to put print these on cardstock and she is right, that's what I do too. I print these on cardstock so they're a little bit thicker so they don't rip when they color and glue because a lot of them are gonna be coloring some of them like this and they're coloring really, really hard or really, really light. Um, because some of their fine motor may be lacking this year because of everyone being so isolated and not being able to do all the things with COVID. So, so we just gotta, we gotta just take them where they are and keep going. So that's one thing I do. Now the next thing I like to do for table time is just grab things that are on the shelf in all the centers. Well, not all the stuff, but I'll grab one thing off the shelf and put it at each table. So that way they can get to know what's on the shelves um, in our classroom. Um, and so that way when they see it, when they go over to the library center or they go over to the math center, um, they go, oh, I remember playing with those at table time. Those look really fun and they can grab them and they can play with them. So it's just kind of like open exploration with manipulatives and letters. So like one thing that you can pull out. So I have these letter and number bots from Lakeshore. They're like little letter robots. I love putting these out, and I usually just put the tub in the middle, um, or I take the tub and I will dump them on a tray just so it's easier for kiddos to share, and I'll just have this out on the table in the middle, or maybe I'll put two trays out so they don't have to reach so far, um, but that way they have to share and um, kind of start like, you know, start practicing all those social skills. Um, so yeah, these trays, just you can use any kind of tray. These are from the Target Dollar Spot. Lakeshore has some. Um, you can also buy like lunch trays from um, Amazon. Those were great for stuff like this too. So you can toss those out. Um, if you have any kind of like letter manipulative, so if you have letter locks or letter popsicles or letter Legos or letter um, beads, anything from the library center, you can just put those out. Um, maybe you want to put one on this side, one on that side of the table, um, because obviously, you know, that many kids are not going to be able to play with this, so maybe put one activity on one side, another activity on the other side, so kiddos can play with just the things that are already on your shelf, so they can just get to know 
what's on the shelf um, and just kind of get more comfortable learning um, what's in the classroom that they can play with. I also love putting out um, magnet letters. Um, and again, I would put these, I would just probably, I'm not gonna do it right now so I don't have to clean it up, but I would just literally take handfuls of these and put them all down the middle of the table. And then I would have either a pizza pan or a cookie sheet. These are from the Dollar Tree. Um, these are great. So one year I went to the Dollar Tree and they didn't have um, cookie sheets. They had these pizza pans. So they're actually really fun um, to use. So they're, they work great and it's kind of something different. So just have one at each chair. And if you teach kinder and you want to put a line down the middle so they can sort them and maybe they're just going to sort them by color. Maybe you could just have two different on there and they could sort them by color. Maybe they're just going to have an empty tray and they're just going to be putting the letters on. And, you, and then you can also notice a lot of things during table time. Maybe some kiddos are just putting the letters on kind of however. Maybe you're going to notice that some kiddos are putting the letters on and then turning them. So they are um, standing up the right way. They're not, you know, sideways or backwards and they're kind of fixing them. So you'll kind of get to see where everybody's skills are at just on a super, super basic level um, just by kind of watching them explore the manipulatives. And you'll also see too who, um, who can share, who, um, who's kind of shy and holding back, um, who is talking to their peers, who's kind of just sitting and watching their peers. Um, you also see kind of like levels of play. Are they talking? Are they sharing? All the things. So just magnet letters and magnet trays is a fun one too. And my earring does not, it doesn't want to stay in. So I'm just going to take them both off so I don't have one earring on, one earring off. Okay, so also it's fun. Um, in my math center, you guys know I love I love trays. So these are just some ice cube trays I get at the Dollar Tree. They usually have these around um, summer. You can also use egg carton trays. You can use ice cube trays. Um, but I just put one of these at each seat. And again, I just dump the pom-poms down the middle. These are just a box of pom-poms. They have, um, there's sparkly ones. There's um, just fuzzy ones. There's small ones, there's big ones, there's medium ones. I love them because there's different sizes and different colors. Um, so they can do, there's so many like learning opportunities for you, for them to do with these. Plus they're just gorgeous and they're very appealing and they're soft and fuzzy. Um, and then I, you can see I have tweezers. This is literally, I pulled this off my math shelf. So I have tweezers on the side. You can also take the tweezers, just put them there. Um, and then you'll see too who, can use tweezers, who is just putting the tweezers to the side and not even touching them, who is using the tweezers for a couple times and then their hand gets tired and they put them down, who's using them the whole time. Um, so it's, again, just a really super way to just kind of see where everybody's at. Um, if you, you know, are intentionally observing just as you kind of walk by, um, some kiddos are gonna sort, some kiddos are gonna make patterns and some kiddos are just gonna have fun putting them in and they're just gonna fill it up and then they're gonna dump it out. But they're getting to know um, what's in the classroom by using the supplies. And you can say, oh, you know, after you clean up, they're like, oh my gosh, these are in our classroom. Does anybody know what shelf these go on? And they can be like, oh, they go in the Discovery Center. Oh, what shelf do they go on? How do I know where they go? And they'll go, oh, Miss Jackie, you have to look, look for the picture on the shelf and it has to match. So you can also talk about and kind of model how to clean up, how to figure out where things go um, by modeling, um, using the photo, putting it on the shelf to match. Um, so yeah, so you can do a ton of different things because um, I think sometimes at the beginning of the year, especially when we introduce centers, we kind of skip over it because it's kind of boring. I think <laughs> at least um, when we're introducing centers, and if a kid says they want to go to Discovery, but they actually, they really don't know what's in Discovery. They just want to play with like the locks. And maybe they go over to Discovery and they're like, oh, the locks aren't over here, they're in the library. So now they have to change centers already at the beginning because they don't know what's where. So again, at the end of table time, say, oh, what center do these go in? Oh my gosh, they go in Discovery. Let's all walk over there and go put it away together. And so again, you can know what's in what center. 
So you get great fine motor, you're, they're doing some social skills, and they're learning what's in their classroom. This is another thing that I have in my math center that is always, always a hit. Um, it is little, I don't know what are these. So it's washers and bolts and I guess screws. No, not screws. What are these? I don't, I don't know what these are. Bolts, nuts, washers. There we go. Bolts, nuts, and washers. And then I have like these really long ones. They don't have ends on them. So I literally just went to Lowe's and bought a whole bunch um, of them so the kiddos can twist them on. And look at all this great fine motor, you guys. And hand-eye coordination. Um, or they can just put the washers on. They can do a combination. But everyone loves these. And then if you have the big ones, they can obviously, you know, put all of them on. Sorry, hold on, guys. Somebody's ringing my doorbell. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hopefully that still works. Um, so, yeah, so I just put these out. And, again, you can put them out either just in the middle of your table or you can grab. These trays are in my art center. So you can grab a tray. It's going to be loud. Just dump them all on there and then set this tray in the middle. And now they have a fun and easy table time activity. And then they can help clean up. And then, and then you can go, oh my gosh, where do these go? These go in the Discovery Center. And then they can go put them away um, in the Discovery Center. Um, and then also, if you notice what kids are loving during centers, Put that out for table time. Um, if you notice kids aren't playing with something and maybe they haven't noticed it yet, put that out during table time. Say, you know, this is in the Discovery Center and I noticed no one has played with it yet. So I put it out for table time so you guys could see how much fun it is. And so you can talk about it that way too. So you can kind of do either way. Put out stuff they're not playing with or put out stuff they love. Especially for kiddos who are coming in with anxiety and they're sad. Um, you can ask them the day before, say, oh, do you want to pick? I know, I know it's hard in the morning when you come in and you miss mom and you miss dad and you miss grandma and you miss your siblings. Um, do you want to pick the table time activity for one of our tables? Oh, you can help me with that. Okay, great. What do you want to put out? That way when you come to school, you're going to be so excited. And then that way, that little friend can put, pick the table time activity and just say she can pick anything off the shelf. And that way, when she comes to school, you go, oh my gosh, look at your friends. They're all playing with the table time activity you picked up. Do you want to go play with them? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited you picked this. Thank you so much for helping me set up our classroom this morning. And you can talk to them kind of like that. I know that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but it's worth a shot, right? Um, trying to help those kiddos with all of that um, huge anxiety. Oh, and also too, with anything, um, like the pom-poms. If you, um, I forgot to tell you this. If you put out these trays and maybe you teach kinder, you can also put a foam dice at each spot because if you have dice in your math center, you can put out a foam dice with these. Or I have also these color dice. They can also roll a color. And again, all of it, every time, I, everything I put out, like the tweezers are optional. The dice would be optional. I want to see kind of what they play and kind of what their independent level of play is at um, because we want them to be um, comfortable with what, what they're doing in the classroom. So, just another little tidbit. You can also put out things from the art center. Again, not messy stuff though. Um, once they have learned how to use glue sticks, I have like a tub of just collage letters. So you can put these out again. Put these on a tray, put a piece of paper at each table or at each spot, and they can make um, a letter collage. These are great to hang up again for bulletin boards. You can also keep these and put them in their portfolios because you can tell a lot from these letter collages who's, you know, are the letters upside down? Are they sideways? Are they all over? Are they, you know, putting them in order? Are they making their name? What are they doing with them? So put out just some letters and say, oh my gosh, you guys, these are in the art center. We, we got these out from the art center. So if you want to play these more, you can pick art today and go to the art center and do that, which is also great too, because some kids um, don't want to stop doing table time. Um, so you can say, oh, you know what? I know you had so much fun playing with the, um, the nuts and the bolts. So you know what? Why don't you pick discovery today? Let's here, I'll write myself a note 
So you can pick Discovery, um, and um, you can go play that later during centers, because I know it's hard to stop playing what you really, really want to play. Um, so that's another fun kind of way to help kiddos transition um, if it's all already out in your classroom. Um, and somebody asked, where do I get these letter collages? So these, like actual paper letters, they're a freebie, and they're on my farm center post. Um, and you, you can also buy like foam letters. These are from Discount School Supply. You can also put out letter stickers. There's also some letters, they're a little bit different. Um, then these, the font's different. They're in my fine motor journals too. So that's where you can find um, some paper letters for your art center. And then you can also put out punches. You, so if you only have hole punches, you can just put out the hole punches um, and just give everybody a piece of paper. Um, so like these hole punches are really fun. These are from Amazon. I also have some like shape hole punches, which is again, just tons and tons of great fine motor. This is just something I have is an option in my art center. And you can put out, give each kiddo a paper and then put out strips of paper. So that way they can use the hole punches and punch. They can punch this paper. They can just punch the edges, go all the way around. They can use the shape punches. I get these, a lot of these at um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. They're kind of expensive, so you use a discount, but you guys, these ones that have the, I don't know, these kind of handles, um, they've lasted me like 10 years. Um, so, buy them once and they last a while. Um, yeah, so. And then like this one's from Amazon. Oh, these little guys, these are really fun. These were from Walmart last year during back to school. They're great. Because it's really tricky for kids to slide it in and then punch it. So, and then um, if they want to keep their treasures, they can just glue them in the middle. So again, just using kind of what you already have in your centers. Maybe you don't have shape punches. So pick something you do have on your art shelf and put that out. Maybe you have stencils or maybe you have um, dot markers or maybe you have tape. Um, Rebecca said she found some shape punches at, um, or, um, I don't, Rebecca, did you find um, the punches or the letters from Tuesday morning? Can you give us an update? <laughs> um, so yeah. So you pick. So just pick some fun stuff from art and put that out for table time. That's another option too. If you do Play-Doh trays, um, you can put that out for table time. Um, at the beginning of the year, I always start with a super basic Play-Doh tray or maybe I do like a Peep the Cat one. Um, everybody just picks a tub of Play-Doh, especially with all the COVID. Um, Rebecca said the shape punches, she, you can also find it Tuesday morning. So thanks Rebecca. Um, So, uh, oh, and I will put a link to the, the paper letters um, in, the, in this Facebook post, and then I'll, I'll share it on my um, Instagram stories later tonight after we're, after we're done. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you can get, have everybody get some Play-Doh, or you can just put a piece of a jar of Play-Doh at each seat. Um, that way that's there, and you can put this just in the middle of the table. Um, and I usually have two tables set up in the morning um, for table time, especially with COVID. Um... You just spread it out. So somebody asked what, what my Peep the Cat Play-Doh tray is. So um, I will link that and I'll put a picture on Instagram and Facebook after we're done. But I have a t-shirt um, cookie cutter. So I put the t-shirt cookie cutter out and I put um, some buttons in um, in these little spots instead of beads. And then they make Peep the Cat's little shirt um, for a Peep the Cat Play-Doh tray. And I use, just use like a blue tray. Um, so yeah, so just mixing it up and make it, making different Play-Doh trays. Um, but that way so they can get to know how to play with the Play-Doh. And then I also put out a little tray at each spot that ha that is in the art center that they use when they play with Play-Doh. So they would have the tray with their Play-Doh on it. And then they can use the Play-Doh and use all the supplies on the tray. And then they can practice putting it away. Because I also think table time in the morning is really good to practice um, cleanup time. Because they have to clean it up, right? Um, and it's usually less of a mess because it's something you pick, it's something that's easier to clean up and quick because table time you need a quick transition, right? Um, so it's a great time to practice cleaning up. And don't worry about beads um, in your Play-Doh tray because I just have like beads that I use just for Play-Doh trays 
because the play-doh <laughs> will get stuck in the bead and then once it dries it pops right out so so no worries you won't, won't ruin any um any bead so you can also do stuff from the science center so let's say yesterday you introduced the science center and this morning <clears throat> for table time you get put a little clipboard in each little spot or excuse me you can just put a piece of paper and then put a magnifying glass at each spot and then just put out I have a bucket of rocks and I know everybody's gonna ask me where I get my rocks I like to go camping sorry about that um, I like to go camping a lot so um, I just put the rocks out or I get rocks when I go camping or I buy them at the museums and things like that you can buy little kits off Amazon and my kids find them too um, so I just put the rocks out on a tray in the middle and then they can just practice being scientists and practice using the magnifying glass and then they can draw a picture of the rock if they want they do not have to um, this little rocks and minerals little guy it's from my rocks science unit um, that's in there in case they want to match them up all the different rocks um, so again if you have shells in your science center put the shells out if you have pine cones in your science center put the pine cones out put whatever you have in your science center out so they can practice using it um, during centers and maybe that'll spark to some kids interest that maybe haven't been to the science center yet or the math center or the art center or the block center or the library center whatever it might be they might find something that they like there and they might um, want to keep playing it another thing I put out is my calm down kit so I will literally just scatter all of my stuff that is in my calm down kit and I will put it in the middle of the table because when you introduce the safe place and the calm down kit everybody wants to play with it so what do you do if everybody wants to play with something put it out and let them explore all of it during table time so that way when it comes to later in the day they've already played with it they're not excited about it anymore so that way the kids who actually only actually really need it are using it um, some of the things I have in here are just the, those sequins that turn colors just because some kids really like the way that feels I have a little counter for kids who want to just kind of play with it in between their fingers pinwheel to blow I have some bubbles timers which we do not use these as timers they're kind of like a, just a fun little bubble bubbles to watch I have a sensory bottle this one is baby oil and water with blue food coloring some squishies fidget spinner koosh ball just some little ball guy um, a little puppet and then my deep breath ball so they can explore all the calm down things during a small group and then later when it's center time they will already have played with everything and it won't be so so exciting anymore and I have a whole video on my safe place and my calm down kit if you want to watch that um, and I also have a whole blog post on it too which I will link after we are finished Whew, oh, so many things okay I just have a couple more things of ideas for you to to do at table time so if you always use dry erase markers or um, dry erase boards that is something perfect to put out at table time so put just a dry erase board put out some dry erase markers either on each board at each spot or in the middle and then kiddos can just draw and have fun um, there's no purpose so they're just exploring the dry erase markers um, so that way when it comes to small group and you want maybe you're making letters or maybe you're doing a directed drawing or maybe you're just drawing different types of lines then um, they'll have already kind of explored the dry erase board and they won't kind of just be like playing on it they'll actually be um, hopefully listening to you um, making all of those straight long lines or maybe you're making um, spirals whatever you're doing for small group maybe you're making letters um, but that way it just gives them time to kind of explore and play with um, and, and manipulate um, the dry erase board and dry erase markers because kids love dry erase boards and dry erase markers. Um, another thing that I put out is always a kind of like writing table. So I take, the, and this is free when you sign up for my newsletter. So I put out different colors of paper. Um, and this is, and I literally take it out of my writing center and I put it on the table. I put out some little stickers and I always cut up my stickers in little sheets just so, um, just so they don't use the whole thing and it's easier to share. This, and this is just little, one of those little snack cups 
And then I take my family words and I just take them off the ring and I scatter them all over. And so there's just, oh, my nail fell off. There's just words like mom and dad um, on there. So I just scatter them all over. And then I put out some buckets of markers just in the middle of the table. And I'll um, post a picture of this after we're done in just a minute. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so I'll put that out. And then they just do what they want on that paper. So it's kind of a pre-assessment on where their writing is. Like if they're not making any letters on here, then I know that they are kind of at that mock scribble writing stage and that's okay because a lot of my kids are three or they're four or they're five. Um, or maybe they are trying to trace the word mom. Maybe they're making uppercase letters. Maybe they're making lowercase letters. Maybe they're trying to make letters and it's those mock letters that kind of look like a letter but aren't really a letter. <laughs> um, maybe they're at that stage in writing. And then, you know what I take, I do with these? I hang them in the writing center or I put them in their portfolio um, or they maybe they want to take them home. So it's kind of like you do whatever with them that you want. Um, so yeah, but it's just a fun way to get them knowing what's at the writing table. And I go, oh, oh my gosh, you guys, where where is all this stuff at? Where where do you, where do what where should we put this back? Where do the, where where can we clean this up at? And they'll go, oh, Miss Jackie, it goes at the writing table. I'll go, oh my gosh. I'm so glad you guys know where everything goes, you know, because when they're big helpers, they feel so excited and part of that classroom community and they start, you know, wanting to take care of their classroom and have ownership. So I'll say, okay, and I'll give out all the different things. I'll say, okay, can you put back this stack of paper? Can you put back the markers? And I'll have them put back the, the family cards because these all go in a bucket in the writing table. Um, so yeah, so that's a fun one to do too. And again, all of this family writing cards, they're free when you sign up for my newsletter and at the links at the top, top of this post if you're on Facebook. If you are on Instagram, I will link it after we are finished. <clears throat> now, I know some of you guys are thinking, but what about like center activities? And like things like, like maybe like printable games. So the only time I put out printable games, and this is actually a kind of like a Pete the Cat game, so what they do is they roll the dice, they count out that many buttons, and they put them on the shirt, kind of like Pete the Cat and his five groovy buttons, right? Um, so what I do is I will put one of these out at each spot, and I'll put the buttons out with the dice, but after I did it for small group. So maybe I had I did played this game for small group yesterday. I will put this out for small group the next morning, as long as it went well. If it bombed, <laughs> I'm not going to put it out during small group because they won't be able to do it independently and they won't be successful. So I will put out printable games and things as long as it went well already in the classroom um, once or I already taught the game. I'll put it out the next morning. But if something doesn't go well, don't put it out for small group because, or for table time, because if it didn't go well for small group when you were sitting there helping, it's not gonna go well for table time either. And you know what? It happens, right? Like sometimes things go great and sometimes things not so great. Um, if you have any of my, um, sorry, I have so much stuff. If you have any of my build the letter or make the letter games or printables, these are fun to put out. Again, I would do them for a small group the day before, and then maybe you're going to put out mini erasers with them and they can build the letter and then trace it with the dry erase. But again, do it the day before for small group. Or make sure, you know, you did it recently so they remember how to play. Um, so, sorry, I was trying to read all the comments in both places. <laughs> it's, it's going okay. <laughs> I think I'm missing some. So if I miss comments, I'll go back and um, check up and I'll leave all the comments after this. Um, but yeah, so do it the day before and then do it um, for table time so that way they can be successful. And these are in my TBT store. If you want to grab them, there's the full mat version and then there's the smaller ones as well and they come colored or um, black and white so that way we are sneaking in some letter work and some math and then the last thing is stem so if you have stem drawers like me which you can't can you see them oh, they're over there see them a little bit I'm gonna move you there they are. These are drawers are from Michaels. So they pull right out. So I literally just take these 
and I put them on the table. So I'll put the pattern blocks at one table and I'll put a different thing at the other table. Um, so that way the kiddos can start to explore what is in STEM drawers. And um, I have challenge cards and I'll just put them on the table. Like um, um, I can build a, you know, skyscraper or I can build a school and I'll just put those on the table as inspiration. They can build it if they want to. They don't have to. They can build something else. Um, but that way I just put these manipulatives out for them to kind of build and explore and I can kind of see kind of where everybody's at. Again, just observe real quick. Maybe you're going to put out your bucket with little cups. I like to put out little papers with the cups so that way they can kind of um, if you build two, it kind of makes like a little level. Then they can keep building up. And then I also put the little people counters um, in this drawer, just in like a little basket. And I make the baskets match the drawer just so green goes with green so they can remember to put it, um, where to put it back. So yeah, and then I, you know, again, oh my gosh, where does this go? What center is this in? They'll go discovery. Oh, it goes in the rainbow drawers. And I'll go put it, you know, and then they'll help me put it back. So the moral of the story is basically, so table time during back to school, especially this year's back to school, needs to be simple and fun, not messy. You can do messy later once we get all the routines down, because don't worry, I love a good mess, messy sensory play. Like, I love it. Um, so yeah, um, but save that for once they know the routine. That way they um, will know how to clean up, they'll know the, the expectations for table time. They'll know that we stay in our chair the whole time and when we know they'll know that they play and they have fun with their friends during table time. And then when it's cleaning time, they stop and we clean up and then we move on to the next thing. Um, so I hope you guys, I hope that gave you a ton of ideas. Um, a lot of the things I mentioned, again, the first 10 days of school lesson plans, those are on my blog. Um, the Cool Cat, math centers that's in my school themed math and literacy center set the all about me set the calm down kit all, all of that is either on my blog or in my tbt store um, my blog is pocket preschool.com and my tbt store is pocket preschool so if you need any help finding anything make sure you just um, send me a message and i am happy to help i'm going to put all the links in after we are all finished um so check the links after i post them or just shoot me a message and I'm happy to help. There's also a Facebook group and you guys, there's almost a hundred thousand teachers in it. There, I think there's like 80,000 teachers in it right now. So if you also are not in the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group yet, you need to go over, ask to join, fill out the questions, make sure you fill out the questions, otherwise you won't get in. Um, Cause we gotta make sure, you know, we're all good, all teachers coming in the group for the right reasons. So come in the group and then ask all the questions you wanna ask. Um, and it's a great group of passionate educators who are there to support each other um, who use the Pocket of Preschool curriculum. So I hope you guys have a great night and I will see you guys next week. Next week's Facebook Live is gonna be an all about me theme. Um, so yeah, I can't wait and I am excited. These are gonna be every Wednesday live. I'm hoping I can do the Facebook and Instagram both at the same time. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but you guys have a great night and I will talk to you guys next week. See you soon.